Welcome to Kingdom Reality, your gateway to deep insights into the truths and realities of God's kingdom. Dive deep into the teachings of esteemed teachers of God's Word as they illuminate the mysteries of Scripture, offering priceless wisdom and revelations. Our channel serves as a beacon of enlightenment, guiding seekers on a transformative journey towards understanding the essence of divine truth and purpose. Join us as we explore the depths of spiritual reality and embark on a quest for genuine understanding and spiritual growth, revealing kingdom realities. Nations rise on principles, but true greatness is built on God's foundation. In building a nation in God's way, Pastor Sam Adiemi reveals timeless principles for national transformation. Discover how unity, integrity, and divine wisdom shape the future of nations. Learn how aligning a nation's values with God's blueprint leads to lasting peace and prosperity. Let's build our nation, not just on ambition, but on the unshakable principles of God, guiding you to build a nation the way God intended. Good morning. It's a beautiful morning. Everybody's looking so beautiful today. Thank you. <laughs> ah. I beg all the effort that went into looking good today. You know, some people have said that they've liked seeing my pictures in recent times. Looks like this is my this has been my month for using Agada. <laughs> I saw some of this here on social media. I have never seen him in native before. So, you didn't look very well. <laughs> so I think to, I need to make more parachutes. <laughs> so please help me to appreciate the person sitting next to you. Mm. Ah, yes, help me to appreciate. I came, I saw Pastor Solomon this morning. This is looking extra. <laughs> extra. Happy Independence Celebration. So here at Daystar Christian Center, we're celebrating Nigeria's independence today. And it's a day for us to share and to pray for our nation. And we won't be long. Yes, there may be many reasons for which um, Hmm. We may not feel like celebrating, but especially as God's people were different, and we see differently. Like something I learned many years ago that really changed my perspective to life, and it was just that one statement. Everything does not go down at the same time. I mean, as a pastor, it was a life changer and a lifesaver. It came to me at a time when my only measure for the success of a service was the attendance, the number of people that attended. And it seemed like since Satan knew that that was the case, then he sat there. <laughs> To the ex I became frustrated getting the attendance figures every Sunday to the point where I told the ushers, don't count anymore. I don't want to have high blood pressure. Don't count anymore. And then eventually when the numbers went up, we were trying to draw the graph for our growth. And then you had this large chunk of data that was missing because pastor did not appreciate the days of small beginnings and I was focusing on only one factor. So the day I had that statement, everything cannot go down at the same time. Stop looking at only one factor. Then I realized that was not the only thing to measure in the service. But it was possible actually for the total attendance to go down and for the number of people coming for the first time, for example, to go up. Right? So when I look at Nigeria like that, and interestingly, I have cause to give God thanks. So, so we're in church this morning. There are places around the world where you cannot gather like that as Christians to have service in the morning, right? Good. 
building a nation God's way. Building a nation God's way. Nations are created. They don't draw from heaven. They are created. Every single nation on this planet was created. Created by humans. I remember my fir the first time I visited the United States, I was so, you know, it was 20 something years ago. It was so beautiful at our friend's house at Houston, Texas. I, I came out in the morning on the street. I saw how clean the street was. The lawns, you know, green lawns. Well, I, I said, this is so beautiful. I ran back inside the house to get my camera, just to snap the streets. <laughs> but then, of course, as a passionate Nigerian, the next thing that came up in my mind was, but why is Nigeria not like this? <laughs> right? And as I processed it, I told myself, this place did not drop from heaven. They built it. If they built it, we will build our own. Nations are created. If you check the history of our nation, Nigeria was created. It was a process, but eventually it was put together. They said the northern and southern protectorates were put together. They call, we called it what? The amalgamation. Thank you. One of the first big words you learn in primary school. <laughs> amalgamation. <laughs> it happened in 1914, right? And then Nigeria was created. Most African countries were created at the Berlin Conference, right? I think that was 1880 what? 1885 or 87? 1881, thank you. So nations are created. That's the, our main point today. And then Nigeria was recreated in 1960 because the citizens began to ask the colonizers. Ah, things should be better than this. Um, hmm. I think it's good for us to remember that Nigeria was originally not created by Nigerians. I think it's good for us to remember that. Am I right? And to remember that whoever created Nigeria created Nigeria for a purpose. And that we're not going to get no new Nigeria until we have people that have the sophistication to create a new one. So Nigeria was recreated in 1960, largely by people that were educated. In fact, a good number of them were educated in the, countries of the, in the country of the colonizers. It was one country, right? <laughs> it was Britain. They were educated there, got to recognize the values, and then were able to negotiate with the colonizers. If you say all men are equal, how come we are not equal with you? Right? And it made sense. So we got independence from those external colonizers that originally created our country. And then we inherited a new set of colonizers. <laughs> because of our structure and culture of leadership. So my big point today is that Nigeria is crying for recreation. Nigeria needs recreation. Africa needs recreation. And to have creation, you necessarily need a creator. The first introduction you have, first line in the Bible is, in the beginning, God did what? Created. So we need creators. We need innovators. We need people of vision and action. I don't think that at this point, complainers are useful to us. I don't think people that destroy, people that are full of negativity are useful to us at this point. I think that we need creators at this point. So if you, I'm not sure where you belong to, but if you belong to the class of creators, say, we're here. Good. 
I think I belong to that class. <laughs> We're here. In the beginning, God created. And then in verse 26, he said, and now let us make man in our own image and after our own likeness. Amen. We are co-creators with God. The creators are here. And that's one interesting thing you will find about God. You don't always have to look too far to find the solution. The solution is usually inside the problem. I like to remind us, especially those of us that are in this room, that we actually belong to a superior system. A superior system that is called the kingdom of God. We are citizens of the kingdom of God, or the kingdom of heaven. And the kingdom of heaven is a system of government. It's just that it's an invisible one. And God is the king of that kingdom. I sincerely believe that it is people with the dominion mindset that will be able to help us. Because what God said there in Genesis 1.26 was, let us make man in our own image and after our own likeness and let them have what? Dominion control, mastery. I do not believe that people with a victim mindset can create the new Nigeria that we're talking about. It is very difficult for God to use people that have a negative self-image, a victim mindset, and what we students of the Bible call a grasshopper mentality. Don't forget that God actually created a nation in the Bible created the nation of Israel, a nation that came out of slavery. And then when they got to the point where they were to possess that new nation and to build it, something dramatic happened. Numbers 13, I like to read it. I know most of us know it, but let's read it. Numbers 13, 30 to 33, New Living Translation. Numbers 13, 30 to 33. But Caleb tried to quiet the people as they stood before Moses. Let's go at once to take the land, he said. We can certainly conquer it. That's what I call the dominion mindset. But the other men who had explored the land with him disagreed. We can't go up against them. They are stronger than we are. So they spread this bad report about the land among the Israelites. The land we traveled through and explored will devour anyone who goes to live there. All the people we saw were huge. We even saw giants there, the descendants of Anak. Next to them, we felt like grasshoppers. And that's what they thought, too. Roll over to Numbers 14, 27 to 30. I'm jumping some passages to save time. Numbers 14, 27 to 30, New Living Translation. God speaking to Moses. How long must I put up with this wicked community and its complaints about me? Yes, I have had the complaints the Israelites are making against me. Now tell me this. As surely as I live, declares the Lord, I will do to you the very things I had you say. You will all drop dead in this wilderness because you complained against me. Every one of you who is 20 years old or older and was included in the registration will die. You will not enter and occupy the land I saw to give you. The only exceptions will be Caleb, son of Jephne, and Joshua, son of Noah. The only exceptions will be Caleb, son of Jephne, the people that said, we can conquer it, let's go. The only exceptions will be Caleb, son of Jephne, and Joshua, son of Noah. Ah, I declare today in the name of Jesus, I am the exception. <laughs> I thought you would say it for yourself. My family is the exception. So, we are not part of the complainers. Did you hear what God said? You said, we are grasshoppers. They will finish us. We cannot do it. God said, no problem. As you said it, that's exactly how I will do it. I can take you beyond your dreams. I can take you beyond your imagination. I can take you beyond what you believe. What you believe is what you become. I say amen to what you say. You said, not only would you die, that your children would die in this wilderness. As you said, that's what I would do. And then God himself said, except. Because when they were calling themselves grasshoppers, Joshua and Caleb did not say so. They said, we are able to take this land. Let's go up at once and take it. God has given it to us. It's amazing. The mindset of the creator 
the mindset of the victim. So I declare today in the name of Jesus Christ that you are the exception. Yeah. We have learned the definitions of faith through the years. It is time for the application of it. Amen. The revival that God gave us in our country that has spanned some four, five decades right now. People finding Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, finding forgiveness for their sins, becoming children of God, inheriting the very nature of God in our tens of millions. It has to translate to something. It cannot just be a spiritual reality. It has to translate to the physical. We have come to that season where the rubber will meet the road. Our spiritual realities will transform our physical realities. If you believe it, say a good amen. amen. So let me quickly give us some ideas on this practical application we're talking about. Unleashing your creative power. I said the people in Nigeria needs now are creators, inventors. To create means to bring into existence something that has not existed before. So you can complain about the current Nigeria from today till tomorrow. It won't change anything. You can complain about a situation or a need or a problem till tomorrow. It doesn't change anything. The way you solve it is to create. The heavens, even the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth he has given to the sons of men. I believe that's Psalm 115 verse 16. Once God created this planet and gave us dominion over it, he stepped out. That's why sometimes those of us that are Christians and can pray, sometimes we take it too far. We do not understand where the line is drawn between human, the responsibilities of humanity and the responsibilities of divinity. But with time, if you study closely, you will find out that God will never do for you what he has given you power to do for yourself. He only does what you cannot do. Every time God gets to that point where he knows you can do it, he stops. If some people are complaining, ah, you don't, if you say pray, pray, pray for Nigeria, why should we, all the prayer we have been praying, where is it? And then you see a huge debate. There's no need debating. <laughs> Christ healed a man who had been paralyzed, right, for a long time. They brought the man paralyzed on the stretcher. Jesus Christ said, stand up, take your bed, and go home. And in between there, it will seem as if it's a smooth, continuous flow, but it is not. In between there is that point where there is a separation between the responsibilities of divinity and responsibilities of humanity. The one thing the man could not do for himself was to stand up and to walk. Jesus gave him power to do that. But as to carry in his bed, Jesus did not carry his bed for him. Oh God, we have done what you could never do for yourself. But as to carry in your bed, you carry it yourself. I pray that the average Christian in Nigeria and Africa will recognize that point. <laughs> Angels will never construct roads for us. Forget it. Building our political structures. Build, you, you know, one day I queried, is it 1 Timothy 2 1, where, where Paul wrote to Timothy that we should pray for kings and for all that are in authority? I had to read it again and read it again and read it. Is he pray for them or pray against them? <laughs> How come it's only prayer that we can pray? I had to break it down and realize the word there is kings, not presidents. It's king. There was no democracy. Eh, that verse was not. That verse was not. Uh, that verse was not referring to a democratic system. It was referring to a monarchical system because in a monarchical system there's nothing you can do. The king is the king. You can only beg God <laughs> to appear to the king like he appeared to Pharaoh or Nebuchadnezzar, right? Scare him in his dream. Uh -huh. So that he'll be looking for interpreter, then he can get guidance. But in a democracy, it's different. 
In a democracy, you are meant to choose. And after you have chosen, you are meant to hold accountable. Amen? Amen. Sorry, let's leave that for another day. Okay. <laughs> what I said I wanted to talk about was unleashing your creative power. Right? Number one, value ideas, thoughts, and imagination. Value ideas, thoughts, and imagination. If we're encountering problems in our world and we're not creating solutions, it is because we're underperforming as creators. And the raw material with which creators create are intangible raw materials. It's in Hebrews 11.3. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made from things that are visible. There is nothing that has value. The average day star member knows that. There is nothing that has value on this planet that man has created that did not exist first as an idea in somebody's mind. So once you are part of a culture like mine that does not value the human mind, that does not value thoughts, you are part of a culture that will be behind other countries. So you have to separate yourself. So you cannot be a child of the God of the Bible and not value thoughts and ideas. How did God respond to the chaos in Genesis 1? Have you been touched by the message you just heard and you want to give your life to Jesus or you want to rededicate your life to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Then say this short prayer. Lord, I admit I am a sinner. I need and want your forgiveness. I accept your death as the penalty for my sin and recognize that your mercy and grace is a gift you offer to me because of your great love, not based on anything I have done. Cleanse me and make me your child. Be faithy receive you into my heart as the Son of God and as Savior and Lord of my life. From now on, help me live for you, with you in control. Dot in your precious name. Amen. Congratulations to you. If you have just said that prayer, you are now a child of God. Look around you for a Bible-believing church and also ask Jesus to direct you to the church where you can continue to serve him. Consider subscribing to this channel too, so that you'll keep learning the realities of God's kingdom. God bless you.